Hey everybody, Misty Williams with Creative Entrepreneur Radio here. I just finished an awesome, awesome interview with Nick Ray. Nick is like one of my favorite entrepreneur buddies. He uh, he lives in Nashville. I met him as a customer. We've become friends over the years. And what I love about Nick is he's such a visionary and he's such a great like process person. He's so good at coming up with these innovative ideas um, for for growing and expanding his business. He's a great listener, really gets how to listen to the marketplace and then turn it into an experience for customers that that they're grateful for, that grows his bottom line. I mean, he's just, he's savvy and he's a good dude. You know, I just, I love getting together with him. We, we often check out Siam Cafe there in Nashville, my favorite Thai food and catch up and grok ideas and um, I love him. He's, he's really great. He's going to teach you so much about innovation and listening to your gut and, um, the kinds of things that you can do with your ideas with the right kind of intention. And he doesn't even mean to be doing it, but he just, he just oozes so much wisdom and savvy. So this is a really, really great interview. Kick back, relax. We're going to talk about several market tech laws. And in fact, after the interview is over, I realized I didn't point out that, you know, these are harnessed to really great laws, but he's just masterful with law of the win-win, you know, setting up alliances and partnerships so that everybody wins and the law of courageous persistence, which says that when the going gets rough, I'll keep going. I will lean in, put one foot in front of the other, even when it's hard, I will not quit. Um, he's such a great example of that. He's going to talk to us a little bit about a time when his big vision almost sunk his entire business. And, um, he learned some really hard lessons and pulled it out of the ditch, so to speak, and is just doing some awesome things. So welcome to this episode of the Creative Entrepreneur Radio Show, Misty Williams interviewing Nick Ray. Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Creative Entrepreneur Radio. We're going backstage to explore the lives, lifestyles, and growth strategies mastered by seasoned entrepreneurs around the world. Entrepreneurs are gladiators. Are you one of us? If you're a first-time listener, welcome. Feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes and check out our show notes at creativeentrepreneurradio.com. Up now, host and founder of MarketTechU.com, Misty Williams. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Creative Entrepreneur Radio. Misty Williams here, and I am so excited to be talking to my next guest who's become a great friend. He's probably one of the savviest entrepreneurs that I know. Nick Ray is the owner of Modern Nash, an alternative shipping option for IKEA products that delivers to the greater Nashville, Tennessee area. What started out as a harebrained idea to sell new IKEA products on Craigslist for a profit has now turned into a full service IKEA oasis in Nashville. In addition to shipping IKEA products, Modern Nash now keeps a wide variety of inventory on IKEA's top selling products ready for immediate purchase and delivery as well as complimentary services. Modern Nash's services include furniture assembly, custom installation of kitchen and bathroom products, entertainment centers and wardrobes, as well as commercial and residential interior design services. Nick lives in Nashville with his wife and three kids. I met Nick um, because I was a customer of Modern Nash. I was moving into a new place and redoing my office and was super, super stoked that someone was bringing IKEA products from Atlanta up to Nashville. So um, Nick and I met and became great friends, and I'm super excited to have you on the show, Nick. Hey, thanks so much, Misty. I appreciate it. So for me, this would be like the dreamiest business to have dreamt up and created, mainly because I love design so much. But um but for you, I, I actually, even though I think you have a nice aesthetic and you're cool with the design stuff, I think it's the people part that must really resonate and connect with you so much because you guys are just amazing with people and customer service and creating a great experience for everyone. Well, thanks, Misty. I appreciate that. It's definitely the core of what we do is to take care of people. And um, I, I grew up in a large family and... Um, I think probably the best expression of taking care of people is is really taking care of them, going the extra mile, and um, 
and, and making them feel special that uh, like they're the only one. And uh, I think if we can do that, you know, for each of our customers, we're really giving them something that they're probably not experiencing uh, in the marketplace today. I, I, I would guess in most most uh, uh, instances. Yeah. So what's really cool about um, your story is it's the typical like grit idea, grit and tenacity built this business. So um, most of my listeners probably aren't familiar with Modern Nash unless you're in Nashville, but I first started doing business with Nick when he started his business out of his garage. So <laughs> like it went from the garage to the showroom and you guys started spinning off all these different ideas and concepts and ways that you could take just bringing stuff up from Ikea and come up with other services and offers that customers really want and love. And I just think the story is awesome. So the harebrained business idea turned into <laughs> <laughs> this million dollar business. So tell us all kind of how it got started. And did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Were you looking for an entrepreneurial idea or was this one of those things that you just kind of fell into and thought, man, I guess I'll do this. Yeah, it really was nothing I, I was expecting. Uh, the funny thing is, is gr- growing up, I, I used to do all sorts of stuff, uh, uh, mowing lawns when I was just barely a teenager. And I would literally push my lawnmower from house to house, knock on somebody's door and say, hey, I'll mow your lawn right now for $15. And that's how I made my money in the summers. And then uh, I would also do dumpster diving, collecting cans, and I'd beg my mom to take me to the recycling place so I could see how much uh, weight I had and make my money off the cans. And so I became friends with all the big partying uh, people in the neighborhood. Right. Get uh, their cans. The, right. Uh, I knew when the bachelors, uh, the bachelor house had a party because right. uh, their, their dumpster was always full afterwards. But anyhow, I didn't realize it at the time that I was an entrepreneur and uh, I had done various different uh, things in my life, but mainly centering around customer service type endeavors, uh, s- specifically in food ser- the food service industry. So um, my parents owned restaurants from the time I was young. And so I, I pretty much grew up in a restaurant. My mom always cooked. My dad handled the front of the house. So I think it was kind of ingrained in me, uh, even though I didn't realize at the time that, that this was kind of who our family was. Right. And it, it wasn't until I moved to Nashville from Los Angeles with my wife uh, the summer of 06 uh, that uh, I started feeling this kind of uh, – Uh, unsettledness uh, within me. Uh, I was working a desk job and uh, just crunching numbers and looking at spreadsheets. And I just thought, oh, this is miserable. How did I get here? And I chose to do this. (laughs) So, uh, so that, that was the time uh, about the time where uh, my, I guess, entrepreneurial wheels started spinning. And I just started seeing different opportunities in Nashville. And, uh, you know, the, the one that I was, unlikely but uh, really resonated with me was the issue of having to drive all the way to Atlanta to get IKEA products and so that's that that was kind of uh, the beginning of my entrepreneurial story was starting this business uh, before then I, I I don't think I really connected that uh, that was who I was mm-hmm. and so it's been a real discovery process through starting the business. So was there like a day or a moment in time that you're like, honey, let's post this out on Craigslist or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it started with my, it started with my wife saying, uh, uh, you want to do what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the craziest thing I've heard. Uh, you know, I mean, we made the trip to Atlanta, borrowed her dad's truck, uh, to pick up some furniture that we needed or, or wanted from Ikea rather. And, um, drove it all the way up to Nashville, and it turns out a couple large bookcases that that I'd purchased uh, wouldn't fit in my home where I wanted them to go. And I was like, ah, what am I going to do about this? So I thought, well, what do you do with anything you don't really need? You put them on Craigslist and uh, and see if you can sell them. So I did that, and within minutes, I had a guy call me. He's like, I want those. I can be there in two hours. Don't sell them to anybody else. I was like. 
Whoa. Okay. Right. So uh, I told him, as I tell anybody on Craigslist, is first come, first serve. So get moving. <laughs> and <laughs> well, he showed up two hours later, paid full price for the bookcases with cash. And between that time, I had 10 other people contact me. And I just thought, how how is they're just like this big like uh, epicenter of Ikea need here. Uh, and uh, I'm realizing it with these bookcases. So anyhow, I was in a different, you know, I was doing a, a desk job and I didn't think much about it until January of 07. And I was uh, having coffee with one of my good friends here in town, David Molnar. And I was telling him about this experience because we were both, I think in a lot of ways discovering that we we're entrepreneurs and and it was kind of like a light bulb went off in our brains. And we're like, what if we drove to Atlanta and bought a couple grand worth of furniture and posted on Craigslist to see if we can make a profit? And so, of course, we go and tell our wives, a right. brilliant plan. <laughs> and both of them are like, uh, now who's going to pay for what? And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> wives with concern about the details and we're like no we're entrepreneurs we just want to do it <laughs> right. and uh we, we'll figure out the details later um so anyhow we uh we rented a little u-haul trailer attached it to dave's forerunner drove down there wandered around ikea as most people do for hours and then finally bought a couple grand worth of stuff posted on craigslist i ha- held it in my garage and uh within about three weeks we'd sold the majority of it, I about say about 75% of it. Uh, but the products that we had left were just things that people weren't quite interested in, but all of our profit was in those products. And we're like, ah, what are we going to do with this? So, <laughs> um, I was talking with April about driving back to Atlanta to return it. And she was really the brilliant one. She goes, you know what you should do is contact all those people you met on Craigslist from selling this stuff and see if they need anything. Oh. And, uh, you know, come up with some sort of rate to charge them so you can at least cover your gas money. And, of course, I was like, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> yes. So I did that. I called people, emailed people, said, hey, I'm the guy you bought this uh, table from or this chair from. And um, I'm going to make another trip to Atlanta. Do you need anything? And I actually had people take me up on it. So that was how it all started. And it was very organic. I mean, we, uh, I, I think it was just there was such a great need that when we started meeting that need, even at a small, uh, small level, people resonated with it. And so it wasn't like we had some, this is my big idea. It was just, it just kind of naturally happened. Mm-hmm. So that's the story. Yeah. Well, you know, what's interesting is like, contemplating I have a service-based business and so what I do is resell I have my time that I sell and then my the talent of my team that we sell you know so um so I'm constantly you know trying to think of how do I get this business model to work and you know how do we serve these needs that my clients are having and we don't have the resource and you know I basically turn my brain inside out all the time trying to come up with what do we need to do this model to keep growing which is very similar to what your experience has been like. And um, there was a time that, so you, you were growing everything out of the garage and it's time to build the showroom. Like, so take us on that journey. You built this business up in the garage and now it's, showroom time. Like, where did that idea come from? And, you know, kind of talk us through the whole process of finding a space and changing up your model. Right. Well, it, it, we quickly, well, I say quickly, it took about a year and a half, uh, started growing out of, uh, out of the garage and, and, and my wife was uh, had kind of this moment where she's like, I can't park my car in here anymore. <laughs> I think you need to find a new home for your business. And, you know, the uh, I was actually waiting tables uh, uh, to, you know, as my kind of uh, night job. And then I'd work on Modern Nash during the day. And uh, and so from there, I actually uh, my next door neighbor connected me with uh, um with a, a company in town that had some extra storage space at their facility. 
So I sublet a small little 400 square foot plot in the corner of their warehouse of Frozen Drink Madness uh, was the name of the company. And they rent, rent out frozen drink machines. And uh, I did that for almost two years, and they allowed me to double my space. But then when I grew out of the 800 square feet, they were like, sorry, Nick, we, we don't, don't have, have any more room. <laughs> right. uh, and, and so at that time, you know, I, I was sitting here as most entrepreneurs, you know, we, we get faced with different challenges and we get our creative minds churning and we're thinking, well, okay, what, what is the, what's the next step here then? Do I look for just another warehouse? Um, and as I was contemplating that, I also was realizing that just, just the shipping that we were charging for the products that we were bringing up from Atlanta, uh, wasn't really enough to provide for a family, at least not for a long time. And I thought, how much wherewithal do I have just to keep shipping products until we're finally shipping millions and millions and, right. and I can quit my day job, you know? Right. Um, and so that's when uh, I started thinking about where uh, where the profit really is in this type of model, which is in the assembly and installation uh, and design part of the business, which are all things that I discovered through just initially shipping the product. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at, at that point, when I was faced with kind of growth issues, I had this vision of, well, what if I opened my own kind of mini Ikea where, you know, I, I know what their top sellers are. I can put those on display and keep them in stock. So if somebody needed something today, they could actually come and get it. And otherwise, we'll, you know, we'll continue to ship uh, orders for people, specific things that they need. And I think if we can put these products on display, it'll also help people see that, hey, there's another side to this business the assembly and insulation design side that we can start marketing, you know, our, those, uh, service offerings by being able to have a place for people to come and touch and feel and experience, um, number one, the best of what Ikea offers, but then number two, the services that we integrate with their products. So had you been doing assembly and stuff like that before you opened the showroom? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, one of the interesting notes about this business model, and I, I really can't take the credit for our service offerings, it all started with the customer. Um, you know, from I, I remember the first call that I got was from a, a local uh, real estate developer, and he was needing a wardrobe installed in one of his condo units that he's trying to sell. And uh, he had ordered some products from me, and he said, Hey, do you also install those? And I thought, you know, entrepreneur, you right. know, we can do anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Give me a problem. The answer is yes. Yes. Um, anyhow, uh, I was like, well, I have a drill. I've got tools. I know how to uh, assemble and I'm pretty handy. So I said, yeah, I can do it for you. And I gave him a price. He said, sounds good. And uh, a funny note on that story is I, I actually did go to install it, but this is right after my wife and I had had our first child. And I was I was doing daddy daycare during the days while she was at work. And so I brought my little six-month-old to this installation project <laughs> in, a, in his little, uh, little carrier. <laughs> carrier, yeah. And uh Anyhow, it, it, uh, he ended up having this huge tantrum, and it was a total meltdown. It was the the, the funniest uh, experience because I just thought, how am I ever going to start a business like this? <laughs> and you're <laughs> years in crying. by this time, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. definitely had, yeah. And, uh, um, and you know, the client walks in, and he's I'm sure he's thinking, what's this guy doing with this <laughs> six-month-old here, you know? And I was, I was just... I was just making it work, you know. Yeah. Getting back to what I was saying is that uh, all of our service offerings really were developed uh, out of uh, a need from the customer that a customer communicated. Uh, you know, I've got this product now, and I don't have time to assemble it. Can you assemble it for me? And et cetera, et cetera. And it's it's just grown from there. Uh, now we probably have about eight or nine different services that we offer just centered around Ikea products. Right. So one of the things that, um, that I think is really powerful about your growth story is how close, like 
realizing that you need to push things to a, another level, how close you teeter to the edge of losing it all, <laughs> you know, <sighs> and putting oh, the yeah. chips in and making another gamble and you feel kind of crazy, but, you know, it kind of reminds me of the FedEx story where they needed to make payroll and didn't have the money, so they took the money they had and went to, I think, a blackjack table and won the table and was able to pay everybody, you know? <laughs> It's crazy, right? So, right? so building your showroom was like this, it's like an amazing thing that you did, but it's also a really hard thing that you did too. Right. Uh, as my wife says, it's, uh, the showroom is, is uh, an expression of vision without restraint. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, that, that was probably one of the biggest learning lessons I've had as an entrepreneur was was going through the process of building out the showroom and having the right staff on board and in managing the whole thing. Uh, I realized that I was overstretched in every single area and just didn't have my eye on uh, what was most important, which was a soaring cost mm -hmm. of, uh, of everything, uh, because I, I did have a vision in my mind of exactly what I wanted this to look like. And I, I wasn't going to be satisfied unless it looked exactly the way I had it right. in my mind. Right. And that, you know, that was a big learning lesson for me that, uh, that the vision can't be so great that it, that it would that that carrying it out it will cause you to fail. Right. And you know, it's I, I think finding that balance is uh, it, it's a it's a journey I think in, in a lifetime. But it, it's also it, it's key when you're making big pushes in your business mm -hmm. that if you jump too fast or you jump too far. Uh, there's a good chance you could fall. Uh, you know, we, we hit a point where uh, right after we had opened the showroom, uh, yeah, the way our ordering process was, uh, it was our, our shopping cart was very much tied into uh, IKEA's web functionality. And IKEA made a huge change in how they organized their products and, uh, and everything on their website so much that it broke our shopping cart. So right after we opened the showroom, our shopping cart goes down. And at this time, the majority of our sales are online. You know, the showroom's yeah. brand new. We're just getting the word out. And we were we were bleeding dollar bills right and left. And this is after having invested almost half a million dollars wow. to open this thing. I mean, I had pulled every penny from every single place that they could be pulled. And so we were up against a rock and a hard place. And, um, I, you know, it was one of the saddest days of my life. I had to come in. It was December 1st of 2010 and I had to let more than half my staff go and let them know that I had failed them because, I didn't keep my eye on the bigger picture. I was so focused on this vision and this goal of opening this beautiful showroom that I had, uh, had dwindled most of our resources that I needed to have as backup in case the vision didn't, right. <laughs> didn't go as planned. Right. And that was, that was a huge wake up call for me, uh, in business and even in my personal life. It, it just, it was a way of seeing things that I realized that on one side is, is a gift and, it, and, and I, I have to acknowledge that, but on the other side, it's, um, you know, it, you it caused a lot of heartache. Yeah. Right. Right. One of the things that I think that um, that you've done a really good job of is um, is this whole idea of co-creating. And I wanted to bring this up because that staff, you let a lot of staff go, but they, you ended up bringing a lot of them back, too. Right. And I see whenever I've come in and <clears throat> talked to people who are on your team, either as a customer or just, you know, a friend coming in to see you or whatever, it seems like everyone is so invested and feels like such a part of who and what Modern Nash is. Um, they really have been co-creators with you. And right. I, they, there's this energy about your business that um, that is, it just feels so good because the customers have co-created with you and your team members have co-created with you and you've 
been so great about creating space and, you know, relationships where everybody feels like they matter, you know, their perspective matters. Thank you, Misty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think at the, the core for me, the only way this business is successful is if we're all in it together. And I tell my staff this all the time that this isn't the, the Nick and April show. You know, we may have the hat as being an owner, but, uh, but we don't, you know, everyone's a part of this thing working. If, you know, if, if the assembly technician doesn't show up on time, we've all failed in a certain way because we're doing this thing together. We have to have each other's backs. And, um, and and I think a big part of that is is giving credit as well. You know, I, some of the best ideas that we've executed within the business have come from my employees Mm -hmm. that, you know, they're, they're in the grind each day and they see a better way of doing something. And, uh, I've always, I've always had a very open door to say, Hey, if there's a better way, I, uh, I love efficiency. I, mm-hmm. I want to streamline as best as I can. Uh, but I, you know, I don't want to sacrifice quality, but if there's, if there's a better way to do something, please bring it to my attention. I give, I give uh, staff awards and, and, uh, right. bonus and gifts for great ideas like that because they're invaluable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you've got three little kids. They're actually, right. some of them are not as little as they used to be. Right. Your family's growing up. <laughs> so talk to us about being an entrepreneurial family. You know, um, when you, I've heard a lot of your story and, you know, when you first thought about having a family, I'm not sure that raising the family in an entrepreneurial environment was necessarily the vision or the goal, but that's definitely what's happening. And your kids are right. getting to see and experience a lot of really cool things and you're able to give them some cool opportunities as well because you've grown this business. Talk about that a little bit. Well, the one thing that I try to remind myself each day is that no matter how successful this business is, if my family is not a success, then none of it is worth it. Mm -hmm. And when I come home each night and see my children's faces and they tell me about their day and the ups and downs and, you know, my poor wife who has cleaned up (laughs) every sort of stuff you can imagine, uh, especially during the cold season. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I just sit here and I say, this is, this is what it's for. This is, uh, this is the good stuff right here. You know, my, my long-term goal with, with my business is not to work more, it's to work less. Mm -hmm. It's to, it's to be able to spend the time with, uh, with my family to be able to do things that, um, that I think are more valuable, like taking my kids to the Grand Canyon and teaching them about nature and teaching them the value of hard work, uh, through what they see me doing with the business. And, uh, the same thing with uh, bringing, I, I bring my boys, Cole and Jesse, they're seven and six years old. Uh, about every other week, I'll bring them to the showroom with me and I'll put them in charge of counting the cash box and uh, sweeping the break room and uh, just little things to let them know, hey, this uh, this takes hard work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I, I would have had that if I just had stayed in, you know, kind of my uh, desk job, so to speak. And, um, so having, having my own business and, and living this entrepreneurial life, I realize has a lot of value for my children because they get to, they get to actually be a part of it where I think most dads probably don't have an opportunity to bring their children to their work with them and, and make it work. Right. And so I, I, I think that's super special. So I, I, uh, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, and you're such a family man, too. I love it. Even I remember last time I was in town in December, I stopped by, and we were talking and great conversation and looked up 5 o'clock, you started shutting out the lights. 
<laughs> started moving to the door. <laughs> that, that's right. I, I am. I'm definitely committed to uh, to consistency there because I know that's. Uh, I don't know. Just con- consistency with uh, the time that I come home. Uh, you know, my kids know that. Hey, five thirty. I'm walking in that door, and uh, and my wife. She's like, yes, it's five thirty. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> <You know>? right. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is so gracious. I mean, she's an amazing cook, and just uh, she's uh, is always working so hard uh, to provide for our family and uh, nutrition. And uh, she also homeschools, and uh, she's just an amazing educator as well. I'm I'm just blown away at how quickly our kids are learning things it's just it's mind-boggling but i think i think that we have such a great opportunity as business owners to to create this lifestyle right you know that it's like hey i i i'm not necessarily one to think in terms of i like to have my cake and eat it too but i have to admit i i have it good yeah i mean i get to see my kids every single night uh, most mornings I do as well. Uh, I'm hoping to slowly cut down my hours each day so I can spend more time with them and and really uh, just focus on their development because I know that bef- before I-, I can even blink my eye, they're going to be out. Right. <laughs> you know? right. And uh, so I just always try to keep that perspective with them that no matter what's going on with the business, uh, they take priority. Uh, same with my wife. You know, I, I really want to invest in her and give her the time that she needs to uh, to be successful at, at, at raising our children while I'm out here, you know, slaying the wolves, <laughs> right? so to speak. <laughs> so you are always in building mode. I remember having a conversation before I moved to Austin and it was like, you know, I've gotten these things set up in the business and, you know, a lot is happening on its own. I'm going to be able to take more time. And then a few months later we talk and it's like, that was a pipe dream (laughs) (laughs) because now I'm doing this and this and this and this. And it like, I hear your ideas and I'm like, holy crap, this is awesome. And (sighs) you've got, I mean, there's just no shortage. So tell us what's next. What are you building now? Right. Well, big picture goal with this type of business, because, um, you know, Ikea is just it's iconic. Uh, There's very few places you can go that people don't know what the product is or or the name brand. And uh, because Ikea really takes a stance of, hey, they they design products really well they are able to manufacture them quickly, efficiently, and inexpensively. And they build these monstrosity of stores to, to sell them out of. And that, that is their, that is the greatest thing that they can do. Where, where they fall off is, is the fact that not everybody, especially in the type of culture that we have now, everybody's busy. You know, it's uh, it's great that you can buy an inexpensive dresser, but if it's going to take you four hours to assemble it, right? You know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I could be doing something else," and that's where uh, wherever there's an IKEA, there's an opportunity for a modern Nash, and uh, and even beyond that, where there's not an IKEA, modern Nash is a great way to pave the way for that, be able to to meet the customer needs. So big picture, I'm working on developing this model into a model that could be franchised uh, or at minimal duplicated in other markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like there's there's always more opportunity than I, than I think I could even capitalize on in a lifetime. So my main goal right now is developing our systems uh, to be able to allow my staff to perform the functions that they need to perform uh, as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, with uh, a very pointed focus on serving the customer. Uh, Over communicating, making sure that uh, every T is crossed and I is dotted. And so that's that's my main project right now is systems development. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like I, you know, it's, that's just been kind of a way of life for us, uh, especially since I opened the showroom. But I'd say in this season, that's going to be our biggest step is, uh, is integrating, um, 
uh, all the systems that we use. And right now we've got multiple places that we either process orders or manage shipment or manage warehouse, and we're bringing that all under one roof. So if I can accomplish that this year, I will get a golden sticker. (laughs) You'll get a star (laughs) on your chart. That's right. (laughs) So what are some of your favorite? You are a master systemizer. Your systems and processes are just awesome. What are some of the favorite tools that you've used? Maybe even if you've grown out of them, there's still tools that you found to be really effective in your business. Like I learned about FreshBooks from you, for example. Right. And I've been using FreshBooks now for years. <clears throat> I want to say it's like four or five years at least. Um, mm-hmm. But I remember we it's we're always talking about different tools that you're trying or things that you're using, cloud stuff or, you know, software right. service stuff or, you know, there might even be just some offline stuff or apps or whatever. What are, what are your kind of favorites? Sure, sure. Well, definitely FreshBooks is, is tops in my book. Uh, they, they just make the process of, uh, of invoicing so simple. Um, you know, they've even moved to, a, a cloud-based accounting, uh, platform and, and they're, they're just growing by leaps and bounds. Mike McDermott, the, um, the, the leader of that, uh, amazing bunch, uh, is just so creative and, and, and what he's developed. So that's, I, I tell any, any uh, new business owner that I meet, which I tend to meet a lot of them because they're all trying to get their offices set up right, as right. inexpensive as possible. Right. So there's no uh, less expensive option than Ikea. So uh, so I meet a lot of them. So I, I always tell them, say, FreshBooks is your friend. Don't forget <laughs> that. You know, make sure you check that out. And then I, I, always, uh, I always tell them they need to get Michael Gerber's E-Myth. And they need to read that at least three times and make sure that they, that they stay focused on, uh, on who they are and what they're trying to accomplish. Cause that, that book is amazing, but, uh, you know, to bring it back, fresh books is definitely in my top five. Um, you know, maybe not necessarily so much a, a, of an app, but, uh, we use uh, Google docs, yeah, um, around true. here. It, I, I mean, it's what makes our, our business function in a lot of ways with uh, uh, being able to add real-time updates to our shipping logs. And, you know, if we have a customer that um, has something that's broken or damaged and uh, and I need to make sure that my shipping manager knows that this is a high-priority event, I can make a quick change. It'll show up, you know, on his phone while he's at IKEA, and he'll know, hey, I need to double check this and make sure that it's uh, that it's as you know as we need it to be. And um, the the those two, believe it or not, are probably the the biggest used um, uh, kind of add-ons that that we have here. So, um, other than that, I've tried to develop a lot of our, our own kind of internal software to manage what we do. Right. So one of the things, this is the, some modern Nash trivia. <laughs> I'm actually only going to set the trivia up because I don't remember the exact numbers. But when I was there a few months ago and we were chatting, mm-hmm. you were telling me what it's like to check out. So ever, obviously people at Ikea know that <laughs> you guys are coming. You have the day of the week that you come and you buy tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. worth of um, worth of inventory from them. So right. you you actually have to have your own lane. And how long does it take you to check out? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, we we moved beyond our own lane years ago. We we generally take up probably six to seven lanes at IKEA now. Um, that's on our first round of procurement. Uh, in the morning, we've got uh, the way that we pull products. We have it split up into you know the first part of the day and then the last part of the day, and all that's based on what products are getting loaded in the truck at what time and all this fun system stuff right. for most people. <laughs> right, I <laughs> but, think it's fascinating. Know, yeah, we take into account the the size and weights of uh, of the products that we're picking up, uh, um, and their placement within our trucks, so that we can ensure that we have you know the most efficient load up 
uh, time as well as uh, organization of all the products. It is the biggest game of Tetris you'll ever play. <laughs> <laughs> Buying uh, $50,000 worth of Ikea stuff and fitting it into a box truck. So, right, right. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it is it, it is pretty wild. Uh, you know, Ikea tells us, or at least the Atlanta store says that we're their, we're their largest customer uh, in Atlanta for certain, and they think maybe the largest customer, single customer uh in the u.s so right. um yeah that's that feels pretty good it's like hey uh we, we we've done something here yeah totally and do you hear murmurings i kind of know the answer to this but you know ikea coming to nashville where's right. that conversation <laughs> well ikea they they've kind of skirted around it whenever directly asked they say, oh, well, you know, we think Nashville is a great market, but, <laughs> you know, um, and I've heard rumors for years and years, different people come in and they tell me that they know Ikea has bought land and they're going to be opening and um, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, they just announced the Memphis store, right. uh, I guess is a month or so ago. And uh, the general manager of the Atlanta store called me and he said, Hey, somebody leaked the news. I wanted to be the first one to tell you that uh, <laughs> we're announcing a, a store in Memphis in uh, 2016. And so anyhow, I thought uh, I, I thought a couple different things on that. One is uh, I think he was probably probing to, to find out if I was going to change our allegiance uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> to the Memphis store or not. But then I, I think at the end of the day, it was it was kind of like this acknowledgement that, hey, we we appreciate you guys. And right. I want to be the first one to, you know, to inform you of this news. So. Right. Um, so anyhow, yeah, no, 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 I can the near future for Nashville. There will be one someday, I imagine. But uh uh, until then, uh, there's modern Nash. Well, and modern Nash will continue even beyond that. So, right. so that, that's just when it gets fun when a store opens up in, uh, you know, in a city that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it probably gives you tons of opportunities for all these services that you've developed. Now you have an even bigger pool of people that will need them. So, right. Right. So how can people find you? We've got your website, modernnash.com, and that's with one N, M-O-D-E-R-N-A-S-H.com. Mm -hmm, but how else mm -hmm. can they find you? Can they email you? Are you on social media? Yeah. I. Uh, um, you know, the funny thing is I, I've, I've got a Twitter account, at, and I have to admit uh, I'm not a big Twitterer, uh, <laughs> however you say that. And, Twitter. Uh, Twitter, thank you. Yes. See, I'm not even in the know there. <laughs> Man, I'm showing my cards. Uh, I hope nobody thinks less of me now. But <laughs> <laughs> You have other Anyhow. redeeming qualities. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, uh, yeah I'm, uh, um, I'm actually not uh, very much on social media, but I, I do – I actually do appreciate, like, uh, phone calls and uh, – and emails are good too, Nick at modernnash.com. Um, but uh, I, I love I love connecting with people and um, especially uh, other entrepreneurs who, you know, need encouragement or um, you know have ideas and either need somebody to say you can do it or <laughs> run away now. All right, and you're you're a great speaker too. So I mean, you would be someone fabulous for people to bring into their groups and tell the modern Nash story and talk about different aspects of building and growing a business. So, um, I'm so grateful that you took the time today. I know you have tons going on 24 seven and you have such a fabulous story. I know that it's going to be great for listeners of the show to hear where you come from and hear the kinds of stuff that you've been doing over the last few years. And you guys all get connected to Nick. Find them on Facebook. You're on Facebook. They could find you. I am. Yeah. Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas and and Modern, Nash, Modern Nash has a page on Facebook, too, if I'm remembering. That's right. Yeah. And so. I, I do I do get all of the inquiries there, and I do respond to those. That's one thing. I I can't leave uh, a message unturned, uh, um, you know, one way or the other. So, right, yeah, right. just uh, we're definitely Modern Nash, M-O-D-E-R-N-A-S-H. Uh, on Facebook and uh, would love to hear from anybody that you know if you have a crazy story of your own yeah that's awesome well thank you again for being on the show and thanks everyone for tuning in this has been awesome have a good one thanks Misty
Thanks for listening to Creative Entrepreneur Radio. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on iTunes. That helps others find our show. You can find links, contact information, and a recap of today's episode in the show notes found at creativeentrepreneurradio.com. Tweet Telemisty. That's T-E-L-L-M-I-S-T-Y with your thoughts, ideas, or questions, and join the conversation on our Facebook group. You can learn more about Misty and her work over at markatechu.com. See you next time.